and it works rather well as you can see it's almost perfect Terran wear from the get-go just using the mask grave. Hello welcome to Arise Works and this will be a short video on how to use the bevel shader generator in cycles which actually just generates only the normal data we force it to generate the mask data and then we use that mask data to create procedural terrain wear in our case we will be using a mask wave noise texture but you can use anything you want so let's get started so procedural shading and rendering we have just finished the mantra and some of you and some of my friends have been asking me but what about cycles and Cycles is a really powerful engine, uh, but there is just one thing, just one thing that was bugging me about it. And that was the fake bevel shader or rounded edge mask generator. So as you can see in this, um, in this setup scene, we just have a cube and we just have a light. And if we go back into the shading, and I select it, you can see that I have just a principled PSDF with a base color of medium gray, roughness 0.3, and it's full metallic. So if we go into render it, you know, as we expect. So, uh, by the way, I'm using the only add-on what's called Node Wrangler, and that's it. So uh, whenever I press Control T and this thing appears, it means that I am using the code Wrangler. And if you are using it not, you should start because uh, it really speeds up your nodal workflow inside Cycles. Anyway, so I press Shift A and then I start searching. What is it? Uh, bevel, and I drop down the bevel, we connect the bevel to the normal. So, you know, business as usual, uh, results are predictable. We get to the 0 0.1 and we do indeed see the fake bevel that is helping to catch the reflections. Now, the problem with the bevel shader is that it only generates the normal information. So if I control shift left click on here, again, this is done hel or with the help of Node Wrangler install it right now <laughs> uh, to save some, uh, yourself a little, a little bit of the time so as we can see the only thing that's being generated is rgb and some of the values are even negative so how do we work with that and i was thinking about it and then i was starting to brew myself a cup of coffee and then it i was like okay i think i think i got this and i tested it and <laughs> indeed i got this anyway so what do we what do we do first we can get this information into the ramp. So again, whoops, I uh, press the search, start typing color ramp, and we have the ramp. Now, if I connect this, control shift left click on the ramp, as you can see, uh, you know, nothing great is actually happening. So first I want to correct the negative values into positive ones. So what do we need for that? We need a math. So Oops, I think, uh, yeah, I pressed the <laughs> caps lock accidentally. Anyway, uh, we get into the math and what math will do is we will use that. I'll just zoom in, zoom in a little bit so you see better. We make it absolute. What absolute does is converts everything that was negative into positive. So if I go without it, as you can see, uh, anything that was projected in our normals from the negative axis was black. So, you know, I just assumed and effectually I was right that it was a negative value. So we could correct it all negative values into positive values and voila. So now I will actually increase the radius so we can see a little bit better. What do we have? We apparently have something that is very gray and I assume that is the results of 0 0.5 uh, blue green or whichever normal there is and we have the black and slightly white so let's correct that first of all i will tweak ramp so we have a bit of more kind of um, isolation of the black and white colors finally you're thinking like uh, i don't know how does that help us now uh, we drop another ramp so i shift a search ramp enter drop i will now 
create, uh, I mean, I will now convert everything that was gray into black and everything that was black and white into white. So here's how we's gonna, we are going to do this. Okay, I'll make it a, bit, a little bit bigger. So I first press the plus. I can make this black. By the way, you can make this black like this, or you can just uh, hold down the control and mouse up, mouse down, whichever you prefer. So, okay, this is white, this is black, this is white. Okay, um, I'll create another node that will be again black. And as you can see, yep, we start seeing the results. Let me see, uh, somehow we have this edge disappeared. Anyway, so after tweaking the color ramp a bit, we have our mask. This is fantastic. Now you're looking at this thinking, yep, this is looking great. Uh, how can we control it? And obviously, as you can see, the radius information is uh, being computed render time. So you can control it using the noise. Uh, let's see, texture. Mm, mask grave noise sounds okay. And we get the color into the radius. And indeed, we have what we need. Although, I'll drop another mask because, whoops. I'll drop another math into and divide the result by, which is it? I don't know, let's say 10. Okay, this gives us something. Uh, scale, increase that. Lessonarity is... Mm, where is it? I think, uh, yeah, if we tweak the dimension a little bit, it will give us more information. Hopefully, the detail... Okay. Now, this is something, don't you think? So, we have the procedural Terran wear controlled, um, controlled by the noise. Obviously, you can uh, get into the, where is it, into the bevel, press Control T, and if you have a triplanner, you can control the radius using the triplanner, which will be even better if you have like a Terran wear, um, what is it? texture of roughness or imperfection map, whichever, it will work. So for now, we will just stop on using the mask ray. So if you divide it more, the radius will shrink. If you divide it less, obviously the radius will grow. And this mask will help control us, our shader. So if I control shift uh, left click on our shader, as you can see already, we have the normals being controlled by our bevel. And as a final thing, I want this color ramp be, uh, let's, let's first of all invert it. I usually use color ramp to control very much any color or flow data because it's super, super convenient. You can see anything you want. Okay, um, let's see how this looks. Okay, I think we will invert it a little bit. And uh, this is going to be white. This is going to be black. So if we now uh, connect the color to the base color, as you can see, indeed, we start seeing something happening. And uh, I control C, control V, move it around, get the factor here. I invert this as again. So what we're going to have now is all the edges are going to be more rough than anything else. And actually, let's increase the roughness a little bit. So it shows a little bit more. Okay, so um, this, for roughness, one is doesn't really make that much sense. So let's see, this is gonna be 0.6, and this initial roughness is gonna be like 0 0.1, sounds okay. Uh, again, we are working with our metal. So for metals, these numbers will make total sense. Okay, and we connect the color to the roughness, and voila, we have our result. Whoops. Something, some, oh, something is weird. I'm not sure what's happening. Maybe I, I messed up something. Let's see. It, it should work, actually. Yes, possibly something in converting the ramp it did not work so well. Let's, let's actually try to fix it. Color ramp, color into color ramp. Let's get the color into roughness. Okay, this is black. Okay, yeah. <laughs> the problem was that we had a little bit 
of a super super shiny reflection anyway with we are fixing that so as you can see we have the procedural tear and wear on our edges so you might be looking at this thinking okay this is just a cube this is just a cube will that work on more elaborate geometry and the answer is well of course it will because this is a procedural setup although we will have to tweak the ramp a little bit so let's see about that I'll go back to our layouts and I actually have again I have my SMG because you know I I I don't have the time to model another uh, geometry sadly I will I will get back to it so no problem here let's see does it have our material I think it does so I go back to our shading and I hide the cube we get back to our geometry and as you can see, something is happening. It looks super weird, but we are going to tweak just that. Okay, let's get back to our color ramp. And as you can see, yep, our evaluation actually works, but it does not look great. So what do we have? We have these absolute going into color ramp. And remember, this color ramp actually controls virtually any effect that we have on our geometry. So if we tweak that, let's see what we get. Uh, so essentially the black will mitigate controlling the noise and white will have an effect so whenever we tweak this amount it will control our second ramp let's see okay um, we'll have to control our second ramp as well I think and as you can see something is definitely happening I think we should tweak the right amount a bit more so yep there we go a little bit of contrast I, i'll zoom in a little bit because i don't see actually the ramp that well let's see okay this this is it so a little bit of tweaking doesn't take too long it's not it's not bad uh maybe if, even if we create another one and make it slower i mean make it uh, Oh, there's large. It will help. Nope, it ruined everything. <laughs> anyway, yeah, a little bit of tweaking always helps. Okay, I think I broke something. Let's see. Let's bring back Control Z. Control Z. All right, now it's working back my bad um anyway you get the point right so tweaking this will give us the needed results and if we isolate it like that uh, we can again where is it we can tweak the divisions to make our radius smaller or bigger to kind of control overall um, procedural mask and it works rather well as you can see it's almost perfect tear and wear from the get-go just using the mask grave so if i now control shift left click on our shader we can see that we have our metal uh, where is it not subsurface i want the base color okay base color is a bit it's a bit too light to my taste so let's control that okay there we go it's uh, it's working it's uh, you can tweak anything you can use any geometry you want be it's just a cube or elaborate geometry that we have so this is totally working and all you gotta do is just have a couple of ramps tweak them control it using a noise or a triplanar effect and this will be a perfect addition to your procedural shading and rendering in cycles so hopefully you find it useful if you think you sh uh, you want to learn a bit more about procedural uh, rendering shading you know light setups and whatnot using cycles blender and then maybe even eevee let me know in the comments below let me know what you think if you're interested in a workshop on cycles just you know leave a comment and we will see what we can do
with that said have fun play with your new learned skills and see you later goodbye